Hello. Hello. Claudia, where have you been? Uh, on Monday, I arrived to my home at around 8.30. That's why I didn't connect. And yesterday, I didn't feel well. On Sunday, I have an accident. I fell down. Fell down. It's... Yes. You did? When, um... I was, when I was waiting the bus. Are you okay? Yes, and on May uh, there, I will have some exams. Okay. Well, yes. welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, Jonathan, hi. Are you there? Yes, teacher. How was your day today, Jonathan? Mm. It's a exhausted. Exhausted. Um, exhausted. Exhausted. Oh, okay. Exhausted. Why? Because today I work in the warehouse, no, in my office. Oh, okay. 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 So, um, Angela, hi. Good evening, teacher. How are Hello. you, Angela? <laughs> I'm very well, teacher. Thank you for asking. Can you? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy because it's not hot. Uh, it's true. It's very normal today, so that's good. Yes. Okay, let me share my screen. Let's do this listening part, okay? Listen to a conversation between two tourists, Can you hear? Kathy and Tomas. Then check true or false. Yes. Hi, I'm Kathy. I'm from Toronto. Where are you from? Buenos Aires. Nice to meet you, Kathy. I'm Tomas. Nice to meet you, too. How long have you been traveling in Chile? About three weeks now. What about you? I just arrived two days ago. I'm staying for a month. Good. Then you'll get to see a lot of the country. Yeah, I'm planning to travel from Santiago down to Patagonia. Oh, Patagonia is great. And it's the perfect time of year to hike there. It's not too cold? Not at all. Despite what some people think, Patagonia has a pretty mild climate. And it's summertime now. January and February are the months when most people visit. So there are a lot of tourists down there right now? Not really. Patagonia is far from everything. Usually only serious hikers go there. I've heard one of the best parks for hiking is Torre del Paine. Yeah, it's fantastic. And it has some of the most beautiful views in Chile. Nice. When were you there? I was there last week, but I go every year. Next summer, I'm actually going to volunteer in the park. Seriously? Oh, wow. That's so cool. Yeah, I can't wait. I like Thomas' accent. Okay, Thomas arrived in Chile yesterday. True or false? Hello. False. Yes, it's false. Kathy is going to travel to Chile for a month. True or false? True. Okay, no one visits Patagonia in January or February.
Okay. Thomas, go, Thomas goes to Torre del Paine National Park every three years. True or false? False. False. Okay, listen to the conversation between two friends. Then check the phrases that best completes each sentence. Listen to a conversation between two friends. Then check the best answers. I don't get it, Chris. I'm really tired, but I'm still not sleeping well these days. That's too bad. Maybe you're staying up too late. Well, I usually watch the 11 o'clock news before I turn in, so I guess I am getting to bed pretty late. And what about caffeine? Have you been drinking coffee or tea after 5 o'clock? Hmm, I usually drink tea after dinner. Maybe it's keeping you up at night. I don't know. I feel drowsy when I go to bed, but I just can't fall asleep. And I know I'm tired because I exercise for an hour while I'm watching the news. Oh, that's it. You should probably exercise earlier. I read that some people perk up after they exercise vigorously, so it's not usually a good idea to exercise right before bed. You should finish exercising at least three hours before trying to go to sleep so that you have time to calm down first. Hmm, I've never heard that before. I guess it makes sense. So I should exercise earlier in the day and just relax after dinner? Yeah, just chill out in the evenings. Then you'll probably sleep like a log. Remember sleep like a log? <laughs> Yes. After 11 o'clock. Yes. Okay, so the woman goes to bed early. The woman goes to bed early after 11 o'clock news or immediately after dinner? Um, the woman drinks tea, coffee, or milk after dinner? Tea. The woman drinks tea. The woman normally exercises. During the 11 o'clock news. During the... Yes. The man says you shouldn't, what is that sound? The man says you shouldn't. Try before you go to bed. Okay, I'm sorry, do you hear like, do you hear that? Is it me? Yes, yes. It's me? I think so. No, no. No. Okay, I don't think it's me. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi. Yes. It's him. <laughs> One, two, three. One, two. Three. Okay. <clears throat> so the woman, the man says you shouldn't exercise for. Three hours early in the morning or right before you go to bed? And right, right before, before you go to bed. Right before you go to bed. Combine the sentences. Let me see here. Combine the sentences using defining and non defining relative clauses. Remember to use capital letters and periods. Bulgaria is a small country. Bulgaria is cheap to travel by bus. Do you remember the answers? Bulgaria, comma, is it small? Country. Which? Hold on. Let me do it. I'm going to put the answer here because there are many different answers and oh. the platform only accepts one, okay? So it's not fair. 
So it says Bulgaria is a small country that is cheap to travel in by bus. Now, ¿por qué puse la pregunta? La respuesta, because in my opinion, Bulgaria is a small country where it's cheap to travel by bus. For uh, me, that's, that's good too. But if I put where, it's not correct. Florence is easy to navigate on foot. Florence is a small city. Florence is a small city where it's easy to navigate on foot. But I have a, I have a question. Okay, let me see. I, hold on, I'm checking one thing, please. Hold on. Navigate. I'm checking one thing because um, it says navigate. El significado navigate, plan and direct the route or course of a ship, aircraft, or other form of transportation. Okay, yes. For me, navigate was only ship or, because, no sé, no me parece navigate by, by foot. <laughs> Okay, Florence, so the answer is Florence is a small city that is easy to navigate on foot or Florence, which is a small city, it's easy to navigate on foot or Florence, which is easy to navigate on foot, it's a small city. Florence is a small city that is easy to navigate. On foot. Okay, really, I don't like the navigate on foot part. I, I, but you know, I would say get by. Mm -hmm. get. I would say it's a it's a city you can get by on foot, or you can travel on foot, <laughs> or you can go around on foot. My hometown is a popular tourist destination. My hometown gets crowded this summer. So my hometown, which is a popular tourist destination, gets crowded in summer. Do you, wh where's the Farolitos from? Farolito de Aguachapan. Okay, Aguachapan. So wh what month is that? Um, <laughs> Yeah, do you remember the month? Okay, so let's imagine that the month is October. So you can say Aguachapan, which is a tourist attraction in October, gets crowded. No, I'm sorry. Aguachapan is a popular town which gets crowded in October because of the farolitos. Don't go, don't go to the farolitos, man. Or it, it, sorry? Sorry, teacher. I have a question. Yes. Um, what's meaning is gets crowded? Okay, crowded is a lot of people. If you ever go to the Farolitos, go but sleep there. Stay in a hotel, motel, hostel. But if you go and come back, I promise you four, five hours. Because people park outside, you know, you have to park outside and walk. So when everything is finished, you have to wait. This is the problem. 
You know the famous salvadoreño, se encuchan, me encucharon. Literally, that's what happens in, in oh, what Japan in the farolitos. So you're here and maybe you have 20 cars. Now imagine if one of those cars, they're drinking beer, they're going to dance, they're eating. You have to wait, wait, wait until you can come out. So if you go to Farlitos, stay there. Okay, next it says, Is Istanbul has great shopping. Istanbul is the home of Grand Bazaar. Istanbul, which has great shopping, is the home of the Grand Bazaar. Oh, Istanbul, which is the home of the Grand Bazaar, has great shopping. Um, Bert, have you seen that movie Midnight Express? Uh, I'm kind of confused, but I remember it was an a animated movie. No. No, it's a very old and movie, I... actually. No, no, I don't remember that movie. Um, it, it was, you know, class, I recommend you. The movie's, I think, from 1980. But it's very good because it was a true story. There was a family in Istanbul. They were traveling. And in that time, Istanbul, they passed a law. So I'm gonna lay of um, no drugs, no, no toleration for drugs. So <laughs> the family was shopping and the son, he, he, he smoked marijuana, right? And um, he found good marijuana. So he says, oh, I will take a little to my friends in the United States. So in, in the airport, they discovered he had marijuana. So he was the first the first person to get caught with the new law. And he was a gringo. So then Istanbul, yeah, we will show there's no toleration. But the problem is that they treated him like a criminal. So they, they treated him terribly. And he started going crazy inside of jail. They put him, they put him where all the criminals are. And the ending is beautiful. And you know what happened because of that movie, Bert, Ronald, Claudia, everybody? When, when the government of the United States saw that movie, after that, they changed the law. Alayas? Like in El Salvador, El Salvador has diplomatic relation with the United States. If the police arrests an uh, American citizen in El Salvador, he goes to the embassy. There is a jail. There are you in a carcel, did you know that? In every embassy of the United States in the world, there is an embassy. I'm sorry, in every embassy, there is a jail. And that is only because if, if an American citizen goes to jail, the the embassy respects the, the procedure, but they won't let that person stay in the Salvadorian jail. He would stay in the jail in the embassy. Yeah, he was tratado. Because of that movie. <laughs> so it's very good if you ever want to watch it. Part two. Sometimes I feel like I speak only to myself. <laughs> Okay, read the sentences, choose no. the correct answer. It's raining here. It's mm -hmm. raining in San in, yes. in Lourdes. Yes. Nice. <laughs> I like that. It's I, raining here too. Oh, you, you know what, class? Yesterday it rained and I didn't feel it. And um I hate it because in my house I have a garage, but it's inside. So if it rains today, I'm going to take out my car. All right. Yeah. Okay, so listen. Um, I enjoy vacationing in Costal Lovely Town. What do you think? Lovely Costal Town. Most inti intimidate, uh, intimidate me.
most big cities with skyscrapers intimidate me. Do you know what is a skyscraper? Like those big buildings. Yeah, they're, they're high buildings. In El Salvador, ya tenemos skyscrapers. Um, millennial. Yes, and in San Benito, there, there's a very, uh, there's one. Too. You see the Bitcoin. I'd like to retire in a village mountain quiet place. So it's a quiet mountain village. Me too. I would love to retire and live in a taco. But only if I never work again and I have internet, I'm okay. But a taco is okay because it's cold, I guess. Yes. But if you went to a different place, it would be... I but... wouldn't agree because due to the, the box. The box. The box. Box. Like... Uh, Los ancudos, los insectos. Yeah, mosquitoes, um, the insects. Mosquitoes. It's true. But I mean, but when it's hot, you have flies, mocas. But flies doesn't bite you. Uh, some do. <laughs> no. Some do. No, I don't know. But some are like. Zzz. I've, okay, I always loved. Little college towns. Do you know what it's like a little college town? No. Did you watch Wednesday, Merlina, the, the Adams family? Yes. The, the series? That is, yes, that is the. That little town? town. Yes. Okay, that's like a little college town because oh. it was very little. And maybe in that town, the biggest thing or the sensation of that town is the college. Because it's not a city, it's a town. When I travel, I try to avoid visiting expensive places, correct? Yes, correct. Yes. Yeah. Personally, me, when I travel, I like to eat street food. So when you travel to US, you would prefer eating hot dogs instead yes, of- in the street, yes. Real food. <clears throat> yeah, because I mean, it's like um, when you, you know, the United States has so many, has so many pizzas. And todas son locales, like, you know, like Joe's pizza, Jonathan's pizza, El Papa's pizza, whatever. Yes, there's Little Caesars. Yes, there's Pizza Hut. But the local pizzas are better because they're like rustic. Like when I, one time I went to Mexico and I, and I ate, I ate tacos in the street. It's like one time my family, they came and they stayed in that hotel in front of, um, in front of Bamboo Plaza. Barcelo. So we went to eat we went to eat to Bamboo Plaza and we went to Tipico's Margot. Do you know Tipico's Margot? Yes. And yes, teacher. my family asked for pupusas. They were okay, but they weren't great, you know? So that's what I tell my family. Yeah, the pupusas, they're okay, but they're not great. The good pupusas are like in Champas. You know, complete um, class. Can you hear me? Because yes, I, teacher, yes, okay, teacher. Yes, teacher. okay, thank you. Is it true that you buy like five tacos for one dollar in Mexico? Yeah. Oh no, sometimes more. 
but but, but are what, they good? But but like one thing, look, where I live, do you? I don't know if you know the Rancho de Navarra. Do you know that or Paso de Jaguar? Yes. Yes. Okay, so I live I live near, and every morning there are some pupusas in the street, and those pupusas are four for one dollar. Now, do you think they're good? Some of them are good. Yeah. No, those aren't good because even, even when you look at the beans, the beans are white. So le ponen harina al frijol, harina al chicharrón, like to everything because they put very little because they say, hey, for a for dollar. So those pupusas are only good para quitar el hambre, man. Like, but you know, that, that's how it is like in Mexico on the street with tacos. So go with your instinct, como hmm, those tacos look good. Like in the pupusas, you know, hmm, those pupusas. How do you know if the pupusas are good or not? For me, the color of the chicharrón. For me, the and the cheese. For me, the cheese. The cheese and beans. Yeah, no, For but me, that, the, the sauce. That's true. No, but that's after. I'm saying before. Imagine you are in a place and there are ten pupuserias. They all sell the same. Which one do you prefer? I look at the well, the size. <laughs> so, but I, I, yeah, I base myself on the chicharrón. If it's very like orange, it's right. mezclado. The one with purple curtido. That's oh, the one I yeah. choose. Oh, it has a lot of onion. <laughs> with the slides of carrots. Yeah, favorite. with carrots. Are they good? Yes. But is it just, is it with cheese, right? Or no, just it, the carrot it, with beans? No, no, the carrot is in the, in the curtido. Ah, okay, okay. But but no, because, I, uh, I, 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 I have tasted the carrot pupusas. I'm sorry? I have tasted carrot pupusas. Yes. And how are they? They're good. Have you tasted, have you tried pineapple pupusas? No. They're good. Aguacate pupusas too, they're good. Yes, cheaters pupusas. No. Cheaters. No, I mean like, I guess it's cheaters, cheaters. Camarón. Shrimp. Cheer. Mm -mm. Shrimp. Shrimp. Ah, yes. okay. There you go. Shrimp. Okay. Okay, now let's look at number one here. My city has great blank. You can buy anything you want. Shopping. Shopping. Shopping is the answer? Yes. The number one. Okay. I would put something more like my city has great shopping stores because shopping, shopping like that, the falta algo. And my city has great shopping malls, shopping stores. You can buy anything you want. The not, oh, sorry. the blank is fun. There are lots of clubs and shows. The nightlife. Yes, nine life. Bert, Bert, are you there? Yeah, sorry, teacher. Okay. Now it's so hot. Really, I can't stand it. <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> using a sun sheet as a fan. Bert, I remember that in Santa Ana, Santa Ana, there is no nightlife because it's very boring. But only Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But Friday, Saturday, yeah, it's okay. But I remember San Miguel. Do you mean San Miguel? 
Yeah. No, no, no. I'm talking about Santa Ana, but because I remember San Miguel, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, every the bars are always open. Yeah, most of the time they open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I remember. And, like, yeah. You pass by. I mean, I didn't go to bars on Mondays, Tuesday, but when you drive and you pass by a discotheque or a bar, están abierto, man. Like on a Monday. Mm -hmm. San Miguel people party, man. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and and because who is from Santa Ana here? Guillermo's not here, huh? Oh, Santa Ana is the contrary. Santa Ana is very boring. Santa Ana, everything is closed at seven or eight. Okay. All year round, there is a comfortable what? Climate. Mm -hmm. Not in San Miguel. No, not really hot. So in San Miguel, all year round is horribly hot. <laughs> Yes, now uh, we have 28 degrees, but it's hot. I mean, it's not related to the temperature, but the humidity, I think, because we can be at 23 degrees, but because the humidity is feel really horrible because now we're close to the winter. <laughs> you say it is winter, but what to season? The rainy. Yeah. Yeah. Rainy season, wet season. Okay, cool. If you have a dog, you need to live in a city that has lots of green spaces. Yo cambiaría esto. If you have a dog, you need to live in a house that is big for a dog. Or a house near to a park. Yes, I had a friend, my ex 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 girlfriend. She lived in esa casa como comunales. That they're very very small. Que es como un cuarto y ahí está todo sala comedor baño everything, and some people have like two dogs. Because why? <laughs> that that's that's not that's not good. For the dogs, and I mean, and for you. Okay, it's and too those kind of faces are stinky. Exactly. Yeah. It's too expensive for me to live in a place that has high cost of living. What else can be there? It's too expensive for me to live in a place that has high rent or high prices high taxes high oh yeah that's another one too high taxes do you know that that's why the bitcoin is a good idea Ronald, did, did you know that? Uh, is it related to taxes? Well, what happened is I was I was speaking with my friend. My friend is from Spain. And he told me that that um where he was doing a, a research on on um the Bitcoin. And he told me that it was a very, very good idea what, what the government did here. What's that? There were bad things. I mean, well, number one, you, me, the class, we're never going to get rich from Bitcoin. Yes. But we're never going to get poor. The idea of Bitcoin is imagine, Ronald, you me acuerdo también de esto. 10 years ago, I took a taxi. 
and I was speaking with a with a taxi driver, and he told me this was ten years ago. He told me that he worked in the bank for he worked in the bank for many years, and he stopped working. I don't know if they fired him or something. But with the money, he bought a car. And now that's the taxi. And I said, so all your money went in the car? No, no, I invested in Bitcoin. And this was 10 years ago. And I was, really? And is that Bitcoin? Oh, he says, yes, yes. Because look, and he started explaining to me everything like now. You know how much was the Bitcoin in that time? It was like I guess it was higher. It was $25, one Bitcoin. So if that taxi driver is still in the country and still continue, he's rich. Because now one Bitcoin is $30,000. Only one. So imagine 10 years ago, one was $25. It was around $25. Can you imagine like with 100 Bitcoins? You, 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 well, so what my friend was telling me was that imagine many multimillionaires now, they are billionaires because they believe and they invested in Bitcoin. The problem is that if they go to the United States and they want to buy a house or they want to do this, they have to pay taxes. And the taxes are very, very high. So imagine you, Ronald, imagine you have $5 million because you were intelligent and you invested in, in, in in Bitcoin, et cetera, et cetera. And now you want to live in a country, but this country is telling you, but you have to give me $1 million in taxes. And you say, why? Because. So what the government here did, they said, no, it's currency, it's moneda nacional, right? So what happens is that you, Ronald, where are you going to invest? In the United States, buy a house for $4 million, pay $1 million to the government in taxes, or come to El Salvador, but make a hotel, and don't pay taxes. Well, maybe you do pay taxes, but not, not $1 million. I would go to Andorra. Andorra? Yes, because they, they pay low uh, taxes. Oh, okay. No, but but still, but you still would have to. But do they accept Bitcoin, or they only accept cash? Yes, that's correct. That's the that's the thing. So you can come here and you can buy a property with Bitcoin. You don't have to convert it to cash. So that's, and that's why, why some some there's some promotions if you pay with Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So that's why, I don't know if you've gone to La Zona Rosa recently, but it's incredible, man. They're making so many buildings, skyscrapers, apartment buildings, apartment buildings. Que raro, antes no había eso, now yeah. So, de una forma indirecta trae empleo. <laughs> because if, if, you, if you drive around, around San Benito, man, there's many projects. There are many, many projects. So that was intelligent. Didn't so see. you don't know anything about the taxi driver now? No, but I always remember him. So no, but he was very, so he explained that he had a passion for that. And he explained it to me. No, look, it's just a business to make it a bajar y que si quiero invertir, blah, blah. No, but he was, he was very, he was very young. And he told me, no, man, this, this is good. He said, comprelo, look, it's $25. Yo, pss, <laughs> yo, $25. <laughs> I was thinking how people think today. 
And I said, and look, and so I always check, I always check, I always check. Look, right now it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. But imagine $30,000, one Bitcoin. That guy is going to buy his own house and we want. Yeah, yeah I think he- about people who, live, who were born after the year 1995, I guess, because houses are too expensive now. My neighbor, my neighbor in front of me, he buys Bitcoin when it's very low. I think two weeks or one month ago, one Bitcoin was a sixteen thousand dollars. Imagine today is at thirty. So el compra, he pays like I don't know three hundred, four hundred dollars, and he tells me, look. Pay $400, buy, buy $400, the Bitcoins, que no sé cómo se llaman, mini beats, whatever. Y ahí tenés los mismos. Just wait, 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 wait. Ya cuando se haga el doble, boom, sacalo. <laughs> Every month I say, hoy sí, voy a comprar unos 10 dólares de Bitcoin. Every month, y nunca lo hago. But Actually, I was... For... Uh, people in in Spain they invest like the twenty percent of their salary in Bitcoin. Yeah, well, so my, it's my, a common action there. Yeah, my friend, my friend from Spain is doing that here. He is. He says, "Oh my God, I can't believe El Salvador is doing this." Se apeló siempre como El Salvador si ustedes son tercer mundista y hacen esto. It's like everybody, every country, every um. Cada país, primer mundo, quisiera tener eso. Pero, pero no, it's impossible. I used to think the rest of the countries were way better, but then I I watch a TikTok, for example, somebody traveled to Argentina and that person bought like the whole country for one dollar. So I I uh, now I think <laughs> it's 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 just they are not way better they were better but they stopped developing those countries because i know there's a crisis in argentina too yes argentina so, has a big crisis yes and even in chile i guess too and all of those countries are not better than us they used to be but they are no longer way better than us mm -hmm. that's what i think at least you know what i don't like i don't like when mexican people talk about el salvador when they say, oh my God, El Salvador, way, you know, el país más violento del mundo y hoy nada. And I said, wait a minute. You are from Mexico, man. You have carteles, you have balaceras en la ciudad, man. You know, and you're saying that El Salvador is dangerous. It's not good. Well, I, I mean, El Salvador is not good, it's not great. But it's not bad. <laughs> I always laugh when I see uh, Argentinian Argentinian people arguing against uh, Mexican people. Oh, Mexican Mexi people oh, yeah. Because they are they are the same to me. They're and I said, I, I, and I said, you two are too cookie, cocky. You are the same. And I and I I commented, ha 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 ha. And they said. You're from El Salvador, European is not important. And I said, ah, <laughs> uh, they got out on All right. So, uh, so once again, it's too expensive for me to live in a place that has a high cost of living, a high taxes, high rent. Uh, it's easier to get around in I start mira Claudia I start get around en vez de navegar it's easier to get around in a city that has an efficient system Part 2 it says burnout calm down drop off perk up sleep over turn in Meditating before I turn in at night helps me to fall asleep easily. Easily. 
This is not correct. Here is turn in. What is turn in? Okay, number two. After the excitement of the alarm, it was hard for me to Calm down. Calm down. I find that going to the gym during my lunch hour helps me to perk up at work. As what is what is that? Be more active. Perk up. Getting like stimulated. Yes. Uh, okay. As grandma lives so far away, she'll sleep over at our house tonight and go home tomorrow. Sleep over, okay. Be careful when driving late at night. You might drop off and get into an accident. It's hard not to blank burn out when you were working late at night. Look, don't worry about those. So, so some ver phrasal verbs. So, so I put it some adjectives. Any adjectives is okay. Okay, look, it says choose the word that best complete each sentence. As soon as my alarm goes off, I get in the shower, or since my alarm goes off, I get in the shower. What is since? There's the. Yes, since is when the action started. Okay, number two, it says blank, taking a shower, I make coffee. So after, after good, after taking a shower, I make coffee, good. Number three, eating breakfast, I watch the news on TV. Why? Number four, blank, leaving, for work, I take the dog for a walk. Right before. Right before. Blank, I'm late. I take a taxi instead of the train to work. Whenever. Whenever. Number six, blank, I arrive at work. I sit in front of my computer all day. Yeah. This is me, man, from the moment I arrive at work. I sit on my computer all day. Number two, match the sentences, halves from complete sentences. I don't understand this. Oh, I can fall asleep easily most nights unless Um, I, I start thinking about at work. Yes. I sleep soundly at night as long as. Uh, Sorry. The last one. Okay, as long as it's dark in my room. Good. I feel pretty good today, considering that. I only got four hours of sleep last night. Okay. I, cle I keep a glass of water by my bed in case. Obvious, yeah. I get Thursday at night. I always go to bed at 10 p.m., even if. I Okay, thank you. Let me see. All right, they're all good. I 
think this we could do tomorrow. Okay, class. So listen, uh, Claudia, is it still raining? Yes. Hard? Hard or normal? Okay. Jonathan, is it raining in San Martin? Yes, teacher. Can you find me a picture? Siavar Sayas. But Siavar Sayas is near, near uh, Claudia's Lourdes, right? Yes, or Pico. Yeah. Ronald, you live in Soyapango, no? Ilopango. Ilopango, it's a raining there. Yes, would you like to listen? No, it's raining everywhere uh, ex except here. <laughs> <laughs> Here by my house, it's not. What about in San Miguel? How is San Miguel? It's not raining. It's hot it's as hell. Do you have air conditioning? No. I mean, I have, but I just, I only use it when I'm working. <laughs> and so... Oh, okay. <laughs> I like how you're always angry because it's hot. Yeah, that's right. I remember in San Miguel, I used to take a shower like at five in the morning. Y cambiándome. I think it's awesome. Make you start smiling. Hey, thunder. Hoy tuve una gran duda. ¿Verdad que en español nosotros decimos hay una calma después de la tormenta? Okay. Okay, class. Then um, tomorrow we're going to finish everything, I think. Tomorrow's the last day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tomorrow is the last day of the class, I mean, the module? Yes. Uh, okay. So uh, just a uh, suggestion, because uh, the last certificate that I got from, it was in Spanish. It's supposed to be in English. Oh, really? You <laughs> got it in Spanish? Yeah. I think if I want to send it to somebody in England and read that certificate in Spanish. Satisfactoriamente ha pasado. Yeah. Um, can you, do you have their contact in, in WhatsApp? I believe they send you messages, no? Yeah, I will send yes, it right now. Yes, we have someone. Yes, a point of contact. You have a POC. You should write to them so then they can do it to you in English because they won't listen to you. They won't listen to me. <laughs> hey, teacher. Yes. I today I was working on the platform on the platform and I have the certificate. It's okay or it's a mistake. It's always a mistake. The platform oh. never works. Oh. No. Yes, because I didn't finish the last exam and I got the certificate. Yeah, because the platform recognizes when you finish. Oh. So Lo que le iba a decir que en español se dice, no sé si han oído el dicho, hay una calma después de la tormenta. Pero hoy tenía esa duda porque en inglés es al revés. Hay una calma antes de la tormenta. Entonces nos pusimos a pensar cuál es la correcta. Right. It's not the same meaning then. Do you know Credence? La Credence, el grupo de rock viejo. No. Yeah, look at Kantan. I want to know, have you ever seen the rain? Yes. Okay. If you, if you listen to that song, he says, someone told me long ago. I have that song on my tongue. <laughs> okay, listen, listen to the beginning. He says, someone told me long ago, there's a calm 
before the storm. I oh, know. And you know, it's actually correct in English because there's always a calm before the storm. And I even checked it in Google. Do you know why? Because the storm, no sé, chupa todo el aire. And that air is going to come back in water. Just in español, creo que lo decimos mal. Porque en español decimos otra vez, hey, hay una calma después de la lluvia. Pero también eh, realmente la calma es antes de la tormenta. Y es cierto, cuando usted oye la tormenta que viene, está bien calmado todo, solo se oye. Ya va a venir, ya va a venir, ya va a venir. So that is interesting. But in English, if you hear that song, I want to know, have you ever seen the rain? Good song. Yeah, with five beers, I'm, I do it in karaoke. I like karaoke. You like karaoke? Yeah. <laughs> I like karaoke, but depends on the people. Because the majority of the people only sing ese Nodal, Nadal, I don't know what the hell his name is. Oh, no, no. And uh, yeah, like, oh man. Hey, Bert. <laughs> yeah. Okay, class, then I will see you tomorrow. I will see you tomorrow. Podemos hacer una canción, okay? Vamos a cantar, vamos okay. a hacer music comprehension. So we're, okay. we're not going to. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Take care. Good Bye. night. Bye.